Hello, everybody. It's Adam Franklin here. As you know, welcome to today's workshop. How are we all feeling? Good? Very good. Thank you. Fabulous. I'm feeling good too. I'm on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. Um, we're about to you at the moment. Just let me know in the chat so I can get a lay of the land. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Jeff. Your faces are showing up in my uh, in my window. So is Michael and Thomas. Good to see you. Peter, good to see you too. Sharon, long time no see. Good to see you. Diane, Crystal, and Nuke. Paul Kennedy, nice to see you, mate. All these familiar faces. Thanks for joining me on a Friday morning, my time. Whatever time it is for you in the world. Okay, trying to work out the profile picture. Very good. From Nam slash Melbourne, Gold Coast, Morning into Peninsula, Sydney, Central Coast, Byron, Sydney, 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 Auckland. Beautiful. A lot of Aussies. Have we got any overseas takers today? I'm sure they will. All right. Welcome. So today's workshop is called Content Machine and how to create 90 days of content that attracts and converts your ideal clients like clockwork. Carol, Orange County, California, there we go. Stateside attendee, love it. Uh, all right, let, let's jump into it. Um, I know many of the faces here, but as I'm loading up my slides, actually, can you tell me in the chat what type of business you have? Are you a leadership coach? Are you a mortgage broker? Just let me know in the chat. I will just mute everybody again. Right, we've got B2B marketing consultant, love it. Marketing B2B, digital marketing, good stuff. Consultants, how to write, publish their expertise, broker, awesome. All right. These are all the right sort of businesses. Yeah, training, consulting, advisor. Perfect, folks. You're in the right place. Oops, that doesn't look like the right share. Let's try that again. How's that? Okay. All right, team. So as probably most of you know, if you've been opening my emails, I have had a very interesting last eight weeks. It's, it's been a dream come true. That is my, my, uh, my son, eight weeks old this week. And his older sister, who's nearly three, absolutely adores him. And so I've been spending a lot of time with with those two. And it's it, why that's important is because having like when you've got a content machine, it can actually free you up quite a lot to be spending your time either with your loved ones or and or doing your highest value work and i want to not only demonstrate why that is so valuable today but also show you how to to go about it now what would actually make q2 if we're going by calendar year what would make this quarter quarter two the best year yet if you're running a financial year then we are in q4 in australia however you roll what would make this quarter the best one yet for your business would it mean more clients more freedom transforming in some sort of capacity let me know in the chat there as well for me i'm always focused on how can I help more people in the uh, on my blue white news email list? How can I then provide the stepping stones for people to um, get to know, like, and trust me and become my coaching clients? And then when they are, how can I continue to work with them and deliver value? All right, more clients, three to five new clients, stability. 
generating more quality leads for people. Yep, they get big value from you, exactly. More clients, 30 grand clients, more opportunities to launch a copywriting business. Awesome, Iris. And then just let us know, folks, roughly what would a, an ideal client be worth to your business over, say, 12 months? A few people have already answered that question by saying they're 30 grand clients, but just let me know roughly what a good client's worth. 60K, 150K. Good, 30K, 30K. Excellent. Keep them coming, 25, 15 up to 20, 5K, 30K. Good stuff. 11K. Uh, you look, you're definitely, in, you're definitely in the right place because picking up just one new high value client um, can transform a business. Picking up, having a system in place to do that consistently can really can really transform things. And when we're talking five figures, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollar clients, you don't need too many of those to make things uh, very, very interesting. All right. Now, my, my objective today is to show with you show you um, how to think about content, how to publish content that allows people to know, like and trust you and then engage your services, but then how to do that in a consistent way, because the planning part is often quite fun and easy, but turning up each week to do it can be where people find it a bit of a grind and, and sort of slip off. Um, but I'm also gonna show you how we can leverage ChatGPT and AI, and, and that is AI, and VAs to help keep you on track because Yes, most of us understand the high level theory and the principle of publishing the content, but it gets tricky when we are down in the weeds actually doing it. Okay, so that's what I promised to do today. I know that, well, there's already coaching clients on the call because this is high value stuff. We're going to be planning out the next quarter of content. And for the people who aren't coaching clients yet, my objective is to show you behind the scenes of what we're doing in the coaching group and then um, offer you the opportunity to sort of learn more about that if it appeals. So with that little grounding, let me wait for my slides. There we go. So I still agree with Peter Drucker, the two most important functions of business are innovation and marketing. Marketing I've always loved. Uh, innovation has just, with the advent of AI coming into our lives in the last 12 months, the importance of innovation has just become so, so huge. In as much as like if the stuff that I'm going to show you today in the past would have taken months and months and months to do, I'm going to show you how today this stuff can happen with a click of a button once you've set it up properly and once you understand the power of um, getting the content right, but also doing it with AI as your assistant. And in terms of uh, where this all fits in the marketing ecosystem, for the sake of today, I mean, gen the three pillars that I teach in my coaching is having your, your profile. I'm not gonna cover that today, but making sure that with your profile, you're putting your best foot forward. With your network, you want to make sure that you're connected with the right people. And what we're concentrating on today is down here with the activity. So there's really two parts to activity. One is the private messages that you send people, the DMs. And secondly, is the content. And that's what we're focused today. So the content is what everybody sees in their newsfeed, as opposed to the private messages where people are just getting that one-on-one. -on -one. So I've done plenty of other training on how to do your profile, how to find your dream 1000, what to say in the five step nurture system. But today we're focusing on the content. And of course, when all these three things come together, that's when you can expect to win. Whoops, the high value clients. All right, so by way of example, 
this is a bit meta. This is my web strategy planning template, which most of you will have. I'd be surprised if you didn't. Uh, and what it actually does is it showcases all the different elements in the digital universe. It's like a 30,000 foot view. You can see over on the right hand side, if we're guiding people towards the dollars, the commercial outcome, we need to be increasing trust so that people can essentially go through this, ascend through this process where they get something free to download. That then brings them in and they can connect with you. When they're ready, they can make an inquiry and then they can purchase oh, from you, make a transaction or engage your services. But of course, to get people here is difficult and you need to have lots of different pathways into that trust building exercise over on the right. And that's where all these different elements of the internet, of the web come into play. Now, up the top here, we have, we have search. So sort of Google chatbots, et cetera. Um, that can help feed people into your ecosystem. We've got the backlinks and PR. Again, that can feed people into your ecosystem if they're reading about you on a website. And down the bottom, we've got all the different social media platforms. Now, you, you can just, I recommend only focusing on, on one or two of these. Like you might just really love LinkedIn and YouTube, and that's all you need to do to have enough content and enough of a community to drive people to your website and into your, into your ecosystem. All right, so that's how the 30,000 foot view of the web looks. But that is a template that's now in its 12th edition. So David, Mem and Scott and I collaborated on that, I think it was yeah, 12 years ago. And we make minor changes to it every year as technologies change. Like the first couple of versions had Google Plus, some had um, uh, Clubhouse and some of those other Periscope, some of those digital relics. But essentially, that has been the same document and diagram for the last 12 years. And when we release that piece of content, people downloaded it, people shared it with their friends, people used it. And what that meant for our business is that people were coming to us pre-sold on us. They, they felt like they knew us, they knew our material. And so when we were having discussions with them and we could show them this document and work through it with them, they were like, oh, we've seen this already. We love it. We filled it out and we were one step into doing business together. Right. So that was back when we were a digital agency as opposed to doing purely coaching. But what a good piece of content, even just one good piece of content can do is put you on the map with the right people. It can pre-qualify, sorry, it can um, position you as an expert and as an authority in what you do. And it can continue to do this day in, day out because it's published on the web. So some some it took a it took a while to sort of put this document together. I remember sketching it out at the beach when I lived at the Gold Coast. Um, but it was well worth the effort because every day for the last decade, somebody has downloaded this from our website or from David Meeman Scott's website. He's put it in his book. He talks about it in all of the um, presentations that he does. So what I want that to highlight is the fact that even if you just create one piece of content, it can transform your business. And if it's valuable and generous and helps people go from A to B, then that's what we're looking to uncover. So that alone can transform the business. Now, one quick question for you. Um, what percentage of your LinkedIn contacts or your email contacts do you feel that you have contacted? Have you, have you ever contacted?
probably put the results up a bit too quickly there. Yep, under 10% for Peter, less than 10. All of them, but not directly, about 45, 10. 10 for Preeti, 2, yeah, 10, 15. Now, that's pretty normal. You can see here when I ran the poll with my own LinkedIn community, it was, yes, Lisa's done all of them lately because Elisa's a coaching client, so that's good. <laughs> good answer, Elisa. Um, most people have only contacted at most sort of 10% of the people in their network. So what it's kind of doing all the hard work, getting to the finish line or the try line if you want a, a sort of sporting analogy, and then stopping. You know, you've, these people... Are in your network, you can get LinkedIn profile, you've got the visibility there, um, but you just don't have a conversation with them. This function, we've got all these potential partners, clients, etc., and then just actually not bothering to say anything. Now, what I take my coaching clients through is the five step nurture system, which is a message system for under the radar private messages. And that is very effective, but it also takes time and it takes a process and it takes a system and preferably some, some um, VAs to help manage all that process. But I want you to compare that sort of one-on-one -on -one messaging, which is effective, but takes a lot of time to publishing content, which can reach dozens or hundreds or thousands of people at once. All right. So. If you do uh, messages or phone calls or whatever else, DMs, phone, etc., it's basically you in real time sort of, of doing the work. And it, it, it works, it's good, but for most people, there's probably more exciting things that you want to do each day than messaging people or saying the same thing on a Zoom call or a phone call every day. If you're like me, you might like to go to the beach. You might like to play with your kids. You might like to do anything but say the same thing like a parrot all day. So what I encourage coaching clients to do is to focus on creating the digital assets so that the digital you does the heavy lifting. So anything where it's still you but it's the digital you. So videos or articles or anything, any piece of content. What? I have a mobile order. Uh, just to mute that person. <laughs> yeah. Any piece of content that is still you, but it's not real time, real life you is going to make a tremendous, tremendous um, difference. And when you compare how easy it is to do a single piece of content that maybe say a hundred people have a look at, compare that time to how long it would take to do a hundred one-on-one messages or emails. So the content provides the scale. Now you don't want to put the cart before the horse. If you don't have any contacts, if you're not connected with anybody, don't worry about content yet. Get your foundation stuff in place, do your dream 1000, message them privately, all of that stuff. If you've got the basics and you've got the foundation stuff, the content is really where you can get leverage and scale. All right. So with that in mind, let's just do a quick activity. Whoops. I want you to have a think about with the content that you're going to produce with your marketing, what activities can you do yourself? What activities can AI accelerate and what activities can I delegate? So let's start with the first column. I'll give you a moment to think that through. I'm going to fill it out how it applies to me.
Oh, thanks for the kind words there, Frank. I've just looked up and Frank said, this is such a good workshop. <laughs> Thank you, mate. That is very nice to hear. Very nice. Okay. So what can I do myself? What can I accelerate? What can I delegate? For me personally, like I love to set up my marketing and my business so that I can do the bits that energize me, that I am the best at doing within my business and where I provide the most value to other people, which is why I'm here today talking to you. I enjoy this. I don't want to have a an assistant come and deliver this information to you because I enjoy it. And I don't want to have like an assistant or a colleague do the coaching with clients in my coaching program. I enjoy working with you. However, I don't love um, <laughs> editing and I don't love making sure that everything gets published to the right platforms. And I don't like a whole bunch of other stuff. And what I found is that as you do the bits you enjoy, like a workshop or a video or you write an article, that's fun until it turns into homework for the stuff that you don't like doing. So as soon as you do a video and you go, oh my God, I've got to edit this thing, I've got to then upload it onto YouTube and Vimeo and I want to get like a little title slide on and do a thumbnail. So I've got to go into Canva and do that. Otherwise, it's not going to look good on YouTube. All of a sudden, you've turned something that should be fun and energizing into hours and hours of homework. And then you go, well, why even bother? Because if I do 10 minutes of fun, I've got four hours of homework. So it's easy to see why you go, oh, content. Yeah, I get it in theory, but in practice, a pain in the neck, which is why when we start, it's very important to think about, well, what are the bits that I love and what's the stuff that I shouldn't be doing and can delegate to technology or assistance? So this should give you some ideas. Yeah, I had it on, on the screen before as I was doing it. I love videos, workshops, and writing my newsletter, but I can get ChatGPT to help me with scripts or bullet points to talk about on videos. I can get ChatGPT once I've got a work, when I know I'm going to deliver a workshop, I can get ChatGPT to help me draft a rego page and the email follow-ups. Um, and when I'm doing a Blue Wire News or an article, I can get ChatGPT to come up with ideas that I can talk about. So that's really handy. And then in the red, I can delegate all the stuff that's boring to me to people who love doing that stuff, the editing, the publishing, making sure that we're accountable to the to the to the content plan. And so that is how I try to structure my own content. And this is the process and the um, structure that I help my coaching clients set up. And Diane, thank you for your very kind words. And it shows smiley face, you're a great coach. <laughs> thank you, Diane. I do appreciate that. And I do love having my coaching clients here with me today. Okay. I hope that's given you some ideas. Never forget, never take your eye off the ball in terms of what is your revenue generating activity. Like, yes, it, yes, it's all fun to maybe experiment and do like something crazy, like a TikTok video and play around or do some Instagram reels and all of that. However, don't do that at the expense of what you know works. So for me, I know that, whoops, I know that these workshops, for me, they work. I enjoy them. People find them valuable and it brings people on as clients. I know that that's why I continue to do it. Now, I have had an eight-week hiatus from doing workshops, but the reason for that I shared with you on that first slide, my baby boy, I had eight weeks with him where I tried to keep my diary pretty clear. So I didn't do live workshops, but what you probably would have noticed is there were still emails going out. There was still digital Adam showing up on some videos, on newsletters, still selling products like my chat GPT prompt stack because I have the digital assets and I can use them even when I'm playing with my kid or not sleeping or whatever. All right. So you may have noticed at the end of, at the end of most months, not every month, but I open up my chat GPT prompt stack product 
for $100 instead of $300. Very, for the last two or three months, maybe four months, it's been the same series of emails. And they work. So each time this is the people that buy that product, but I'm just using emails that I sent in November and December and January, because once you've got the digital asset, you can deploy them again and again and again. So don't be afraid of reusing stuff that works. To think that everybody's seen it is, 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 is a myth. To think that every, those that have seen it remember it is a myth. And to think that those that have seen it and remember it and didn't buy at the time won't be ready to buy at this time. So keep turning up. When we're doing our marketing, we're just one of a thousand people on a LinkedIn newsfeed or on a Facebook newsfeed or an inbox or a LinkedIn inbox. So it does take consistency to show up for people to even notice us, let alone remember us, let alone buy from us. So that is an important point I wanted to make. So never take your eye off the ball of what actually works. So for me, workshops work and what I call a shake the tree message. So again, if you're on my email list, which all of you are, you'll notice once a month, generally, I will send some sort of shake the tree email to you saying words to the effect of, I'm looking for five new people to work with this month. Would you like to be a part of it? Here's who I'm looking for and here's what you can expect as a result. So I try and do them every one month, except when I've got a newborn baby, but I suspect that will be the last one of those that I have. Okay, team, um, I'm going to take a quick drink of water. How are we going? Let me know in the chat or thumbs up if you've got the video on. Should I keep going? Are there bits you want a bit of extra clarity around? If I left anybody behind. Thumbs up, beauty. And do please also remember, this is the fun part. Like it's a bit like planning your 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 summer body, as you you know you whatever whatever or whatever that looks like for you. Yeah, you all right. I'm going to do all this wonderful stuff. I'm going to hit the gym. I'm going to do Pilates. I'm going to eat well. It's all fun in the planning stage because you've got this picture of the promised land of what you want. But then when you get into the grind, it is um, different. And that's where you need the systems and the processes and the accountability. Uh, Jigger's question, one profile, two content. Uh, one profile, number two is your network, number three is your content for the three pillars. Uh, yes, uh, I'll, I'll share the, the notes with you afterwards, guys. So if you missed anything, no stress. I've got it all here on my iPad. I will share my notes and the slides with you if you want them. Alrighty. So we're not going to spend too much time here, folks, but what we do want to do is actually just map out what what on what in fact we're going to do. Or what we think we're going to do. So generally try and work back from yearly. If there's like a big conference or a big holiday or something you just want to get in the calendar, go ahead and do that. There might be quarterly milestones and stuff that you want to pop in. So say for example it's me. And yours will, of course, be yours, but I like to do a workshop monthly, shake the tree. Weekly, I'll do Blue Wine News, probably two to three of those on a good week, not every week. And daily, I'm not there yet, and I may not get there, but some sort of post on LinkedIn and Facebook. I'm, my, my plan for the 90 days is now that I've done all the paternity bit and of course it's only just eight weeks I'm not saying there's no nothing more to do there but what I am saying is that's taken a whole lot of attention now I've been working with my team of VAs to make sure that hopefully I've got more than enough content ideas and a plan to um, do the video write the newsletter whatever else flick it off to my VAs have them schedule it all in all the right places and have a bit of a pipeline of content that's already pre-done and ready to go. 
with a view to hopefully being able to do daily content because I know that this stuff works. The more visible I am, the more inquiries I get, and it will be exactly the same for you. So you may remember if you've worked with been around me for a while, there's, there's loads and loads of different resources. I'll just share them quickly and then we'll get into some of the chat GPT stuff I want to show you um, that I've been working on with, with clients lately. So you can see that you can see the link there. This is like a year planner all on one page. The link to that is in the chat. Basically, we have used up nearly four months already. So if you haven't done any content and you thought you were going to kick off 2024 on a new uh, content sort of rhythm and you haven't yet, let this be a reminder that it's not too late. We still have this amount of time left. But if you haven't done anything in the first four months, maybe it's time for some accountability and some hand-holding so you get it done. It doesn't need to be difficult. And what I'm going to show you, especially with the ChatGPT demo soon, is you only need like one idea or insight. And they're easy. You're talking to clients, you're doing work, you're reading stuff, talking to people. You have loads and loads of super valuable insights and ideas every single day. Once you've had that, you just need to document it. And that one idea can then form the basis of a blog, a video, newsletters across all of your different, like MailChimp or LinkedIn newsletter, Facebook and LinkedIn post. You might run a poll on Facebook or LinkedIn. You could even run a workshop or just do an audio post or a podcast post. So one decent idea or insight can give you enough content for an entire week or an entire fortnight, probably even a month doesn't need to be super complicated. But what, what is it that we actually need to say? What are we talking about? Now, this content matrix I find very useful and it's a very nice way to remind yourself of the different types of content you want to be publishing <laughs> because Without this framework, it's it's all too easy just to gravitate to the types of content that you are most comfortable doing. For most people, we like to teach. We teach, 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 assuming that if we give value with what we teach, people are going to be queuing up to come and work with us. In actual fact, that doesn't work as well as we think. Because if we teach too much, People go, all right, cool, I've got enough, I know what I need to do next, and they feel they can do what they need to do for the next little while, but it's short-lived and it doesn't get them the results or the transformation that you know is possible. Plus, if you just teach, most people won't even know what it is that you do or how you can help them. So if you just teach them about your topic, they might go, oh, great. This person is is, te is a teacher, but they don't know that if they want, they can work with you or that if you want, they can accelerate this journey and provide a higher level of service to you. So you really need to have all these four elements. And the first of these elements, as you saw on the screen before, is what I call share content. So sharing is all about just building a personal connection. And you might be saying in your head, why would people want to know about little old me? What's it matter what I think? They just want to get a home loan or they just want to be a better leader or they just want X, Y, Z. Why do they need to know what my philosophy is? Or why do they need to see behind the scenes of what I get up to or my dog's name or the fact that whatever? The reason is people do business with people that they like. And if they have a personal connection with you, that is the starting point. There's no shortage of experts or consultants or advisors or mortgage brokers, but there is a shortage of people that are on the same wavelength as you. And if we don't share a little bit about us, 
It doesn't have to be inane stuff like what you had for breakfast or deeply personal stuff. It can be your philosophies or why you got into this career path or 10 lessons I've learned along the way when things didn't go right for me. Anything where there's that connection gives people a chance to get to know, like, and try, or to, get, to get to like you. Then we, what we want to do after that is we want to actually demonstrate that our stuff works. Because most people, great, they like you, but I've got a lot of friends who I don't necessarily, I, you know, I don't have proof that their stuff works. So we're not just here to make friends. That's the first point. There's got to be the like factor, but we need to demonstrate that our stuff works, which is why we do need to have case studies, testimonials. We need to be able to share our accolades and our awards, even if that makes us uncomfortable. Um, we need to share any praise or press that we get because if people can see that what you do works, maybe you get the best um, rate for a home loan. Maybe you overcome obstacles so they can get that um, you know, approved and processed quicker. Maybe you help get insurance claims resolved better or faster. Maybe you help leaders achieve their KPIs. These are things that you need to communicate in order for people to um, know that your stuff works. So this is show content. If that's all you did, though, you'd be a bit of a show off. No one likes a show off, but you do need, you know, you need, do need to tick that quadrant off. If you do too much of um, number one, building connection, you kind of just like a popular person on Instagram. You might have a hundred thousand followers, but they, people like you, but are they going to engage with you? Are they going to buy anything from you? Do you even have a business? Um, which brings me to quadrant three. This is where most of us feel most comfortable teaching, writing articles, giving lessons, sharing how to's, all of that. That's where I feel most comfortable too. It's definitely taken me a bit more conscious um, thought to share more of the personal stuff to share client results, to share accolades that I get. Um, that stuff makes me feel more uncomfortable than just teaching marketing. I think that's probably pretty normal for most of us. And um, pillar four or quadrant four of the matrix is to offer, make an offer. So it doesn't need to be a commercial offer. It just needs to be a call to action or an invite to take the next step. So with today's workshop, my offer element for today is to book a conversation with me to talk about how my coaching might help you. All right. When I do a LinkedIn post, one of those types of um, posts, as you probably have seen, is an offer to download a piece of flagship content. I'll say this is the latest version of my web strategy planning template. If you'd like a copy, leave a comment and I will send it to you. On the emails, the shake the trees, I'm looking to work with five people who want this outcome in this time frame. The workshop invite that you've all responded to today, I'm running a workshop on Friday. Would you like to join me? So if you are inviting people to take the next step, that's what this fourth quadrant is all about. Does that make sense, team? Hello, Dale. I've just seen you there. Hello, Neil. And Jody, nice to see you. Just having a look through the names again. Is that making sense? Are there any questions? Okay. Now, there is a bit of a resource I've put together which I didn't include in my slides. So I'm just going to put in now. And this is the content matrix playbook. So all that stuff I've just explained to you, the four different types of content, I'll pop the link into the chat, bluewiremedia.com.au slash matrix. It takes you straight to the Google doc, no opt-in. It's a resource here where you can actually fill it out it's more of a brainstorming document 
So the share content, the show content, the teach and the offer, all the suggestions down the left. And then your job is you can fill in all these different, different parts. Like if I was going to do a workshop or event invite, I could do an email. So you'd either go, yes, or you might go, yeah, it's my content machine workshop. Would I do a video for that? Look, I, I probably could, but I may not be around to it because I'm busy. Um, all right, there's some teach. What could I teach? I could do a tutorial as an article. I could do an email for that same thing. I could do a video, but it's designed to get you thinking and get the ideas down more so than a finished product. Like you wouldn't just sort of take this spreadsheet and go, okay, that's my content plan. That's kind of just the, um, kind of just the idea generation part, but that's a resource for you. And then all I need to show you then is once you've actually got all those ideas down, all you want to do then is pop it into like a Trello board or a Asana, Monday, whichever tool you like. And then even if you're just going to do one of these a week, if that's something you can aspire to do, like for April, you would just go, okay, so my, my share content this week is X, Y, Z. My show content is this award I did. I got the teach is a lesson on X, Y, Z. My offer is a CTA for a workshop. Excuse my handwriting, it's pretty terrible. And then as you do each of those, I like to just drag, rather than archive it, which you can do with Trello, I like to drag it down the bottom so that I can actually see all the stuff I've done for that month. Now, that is the plan. What I want to do now is show you how that kind of looks in real life, especially when you've got the right tools and ingredients and frameworks. All right. So, so far, does that feel like something that you'd be able to implement? Following the four quadrants, collecting out ideas in that Google sheet and then mapping that out onto a Trello board or your tool of choice. Great. Already doing this. Good man, Peter. I do see your content as well. Uh, your mental blocks, Jody. Your brain thinks it's stressful or something. It's not that it's not that stressful, no. I'm glad I relax your nerves. <laughs> Kind of, any any of this marketing stuff is is overwhelming. I won't deny that. Like when you just think, oh my God, I've got to market my business. I need more leads. I've got to put myself out there. I'm going to have to hassle people to buy from me. I'm going to interrupt them with my content. I'm going to spam them. That is stressful. But that is all coming from a mental block of I'm not valuable, I'm not helpful. When you reframe it as I know I can help people, some people need what i've got and i've got stuff that's free that's useful so let's just start with something valuable that i can unpack from my business and share it i can put it on my facebook and say if you if you're one of my connections you may know that i work with clients doing this sort of stuff here's a resource that many of them have found valuable talk a little bit about it i'm not charging for this i'm giving it away it's exactly what my clients use would you like a copy? And then when people say yes, engage them in a conversation. Say, how did you find it? Would you like my help going through this in more detail? Or what are your goals? How can I help you on that journey? And when you reframe it from a place of generosity and value, if people reject you, it's no skin off your nose. It's They're not ready yet. You know you've got something of value. You're just inviting them to come along that journey if you want. And once, they're, once they've engaged with your free stuff, well, then it's your duty, it's your moral obligation to ask them if they would like more help. I, draw, I normally draw the analogy of like if you've walked into a restaurant, you have given, like you've walked in off the street into a restaurant or you've made a booking to come in, like you've booked in somebody's calendar, you've turned up. That is a very clear indicator that you are interested in eating or dining or drinking. All right, so if you turn up to a restaurant 
and the white staff were like, oh, I don't really want to interrupt this person. I feel really pushy and salesy. And what if they reject me? Then they're just going to see that as bad service. All right. And if you take this approach of feeling too uncomfortable asking the question or offering stuff, people are just going to go, oh, that person, they've got bad service. I want, I'm here because I'm interested. Please take my hand and hold it and show me what I need to do next and how you can help. All right. That's my little, <laughs> little rant there. All right. How about we jump into some chat GPT stuff, specifically focused on this exact process? All right. So for starters, many of you might know that I've got my prompt stack um, product. Many of you have bought it. Coaching clients get the full unabridged thing. The $100 prompt stack is usually 300 US, but when I run these workshops, it's 100 US, and it's got 20 pages of prompts. Now, the beauty of this is that it's a prompt stack. You're looking at the prompts now. Um, the beauty of this is that basically, and I've done whole workshops on this, so this is the very condensed version. Rather than having individual prompts each time, we layer them on top of each other and stack them in one thread so that ChatGPT learns more about us as we go. So we firstly need to tell ChatGPT a little bit about ourselves. And I like to give it a bit of background information about my client, so my, my ideal client, about my business and about myself. So it knows this is my ideal client. This is my business. This is Adam. This is how I write. So in the yellow bits is what I put in for myself. So my ideal client is a consultant, subject matter expert, coach or advisor in professional services who is also a business owner located generally in Australia, US, UK, New Zealand. I could probably include Canada in there. They have a solid real life business but their online presence, that's not even spelt right. Their online presence should be like that. Not that it matters, but their online presence is lagging a bit behind and doesn't reflect their real life business credentials. They usually want more leads, increased visibility, better content, and a marketing system or engine that isn't overwhelming. Marketing isn't their expertise, but they're committed to implementing it, which isn't their core expertise. All right. Only, it does, only needs to be a few sentences. You don't want to overdo it. A little bit about me. Blue Wire Meat is a coaching business. Blah, blah, blah. Here's some background information on myself. Coach, author, speaker. I'm an Aussie. I live at the Sunshine Coast. Wife, two kids and a dog. I like to surf and keep fit. And the way that I write, I try to be educational, generous, jargon-free, and relatable. So doing that as a first step, However you want to word it, you can, you can borrow that format or not. But then what we want to do is feed that into ChatGPT. And when I, I've already pre-done pre, pre this so in the interest of time, I tell it that. And then this is all part of the prompt stack, which you can get you know, for $100, but I'm just going to show you um, how it works. You can replicate the same sort of thing yourself. Um, but I've then feed it this big, this big prompt basically because I want to get the away from motivators or the fears of my ideal clients, which this is very accurate. Um, they're scared of underperforming online. They're getting inadequate leads. It's complex and overwhelming for them. They've got lack of visibility and an inefficient marketing system. They want they're their fears. That they want to move towards having an enhanced online profile increase the lead for the high quality lead flow a simple and effective marketing system greater content impact and a sustainable business model and growth all right then i ask it to help look at the emotional drivers so they're insecure they're frustrated they're overwhelmed they're feeling irrelevant they're dissatisfied but they want to be confident optimistic in control accomplished and secure and then i get it to actually paint out a, a buyer persona for me. Plus, what I also want ChatGPT to do 
is to learn how to write like me. So I've given it a whole bunch of examples in a, in a PDF, and then I've got it to give me this um, style guide. So my tone is conversational, approachable, informative. My style is educational with generous amounts of sharing personal experience and, and client stories, jargon free. So this is what it's determined from the example I've given it. This isn't me telling it how I want to write. This is saying, this is how Adam does write based on what it's seen. Here's the topics I write about. The audience is typically these types of people, um, sections, headlines, expressions, terms of phrase that I use. When you're ready, let's dive in. Here's why this matters. Expressions like shake the tree, low hanging fruit. So it's all stuff that, um, it's all stuff. Yeah, this, this is the language that I use. So it's really understood me properly. And so, yeah, basically it's a very thorough writing style guide. And all of you can do this very easily. That took 20 minutes. You can recreate those, you know, from what I've taught you, do it yourself or for 100 US bucks, just get the, the prompt stack. And, and that's just the start of it. Um, that's more like the training bit. This is the stuff that we need to do so that ChatGPT understands us and our business. I use the paid version of ChatGPT to run those prompts, but you'll get similar results on the free version. The only difference is you can't attach a document. You've got to copy and paste everything. I reckon for 20 bucks a month, the paid version is, is pretty sweet. And the next thing that I just should have show you is requires the, the paid version. All right, so what, what that allows us to do, even just with the prompt stack, once it understands all this, what I've just shown you, you can then say to it, great, can you give me some content ideas? Can you write me a Facebook post? Can you write me an article on this? And it will do a phenomenal, phenomenal job. See you, Sean. However, what I have found and what many clients, even on this call, have found You've got this chat thread here that is very smart and it knows you and it's giving great output until it doesn't. Like when you've done hundreds of bits and pieces, it tends to get indigestion because there's so much stuff that it's trying to remember and look through. And it also starts to hallucinate. So after a while with too much in its tummy and it just gives you these weird you probably have found it refuses to do stuff for you. Um, I've got an intruder. Hang on one sec. Come up here, Lola. Here's my little intruder. This is, what's your name? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to say hello to all these people? Do you want to give a wave? All right, everyone want to wave at Lola? Thank you. All right. I'll be, I'll be out in a sec, eh? Hey? Yeah. All right. See ya. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it starts to hallucinate, gives you weird things, refuses to do stuff. And that's frustrating because either you've got to start this whole thing again um, or just get uh, poorer and poorer results. So, uh, <laughs> but what we can do now is we can actually create our own GPT. So if you're on the paid version, you can actually create your own one. So I've created Adam's AI. It writes like Adam Franklin and generates content ideas. So now at the click of a button, I've set it up so that if I want some ideas of show content, share content, teach content, or offer content, I can hit the button. So let's click that. Now it knows the types of people I work with. It knows about my quadrant. Um, <clears throat> it knows the topics that I talk about. And so what it now does is it spits out all of these different uh, teach ideas. And you can set this sort of stuff up yourself. So, yeah, I could teach organic SEO for non-techies. I could teach create a digital marketing plan. The art of content repo. These are all really good suggestions that I would, that I would actually use. If you don't like any of those, you could say do 20 more. 
and it will keep giving you more and more ideas. Um, and then because it knows so much about you, and I'll show you how to do this in a second, you could say, okay, let's go deeper with this. With that option, um, write me a LinkedIn post. No worries, Charlene. Uh, let me just get the link as well for that um, chat GPT prompt pack. I'll let, the, I'll let that run for a sec. Um, I know some people are leaving and I like to finish right on time. I will send you the link um, on email as well. Coaching clients, you, you, I shouldn't need to say, but you don't need to buy this. You've got this already. Prompt stack. It's preloaded with a, a discount code that will only be available for the next couple of days. So hop in there and, and grab that. If you want it, I've shown you how it works. You've seen the first sort of, um, you've seen the first three or four prompts. There's loads more. It'll write your landing pages and all this other stuff. So it's normally 300 bucks. I've put a discount code insider and that takes it down to hundred dollars US. So just plug your details in there. Um, so basically, yeah, let's head back to my GPT. It spits out a whole, it, it can then write a LinkedIn post. Now I've actually told it, um, go easy on the emojis. If, if anything, use ticks or the little finger. Um, it's probably too many emojis for me, but you can see here, I wouldn't use the, the rocket ship, but you can see here, it's given me a first draft of a, of a um, article. Now, the good thing with your own GPT is because the way it works is that you set one up yourself and you can create it by just telling it what you want. What I prefer to do is configure it in the back end and give it instructions here. There's 8,000 characters you can use so you can really get specific with what you want it to do. You can have your shortcut buttons here. You can upload stuff into the knowledge center. So like the buyer persona, the um, away from motivators or fears, the writing style guide for Adam. That's all information that I that I load into it. And so then that is a tool for my VAs to use as well as me. So my VAs can go on a Monday morning, Monday afternoon meeting. Adam, here's 50 ideas. In a, here they're all in a spreadsheet. Which ones do you want to do this week? I'll go, yeah, I feel like talking about SEO or I feel like talking about this. So then in our spreadsheet, they know these, these are the ones Adam's going to do. I literally get out my phone if I'm doing a video or I do it on my computer, talk about the topic, WhatsApp them or add it to the Google Drive for my VAs. And then they can make sure that it's transcribed and it's off onto YouTube and Vimeo or my LinkedIn or my Facebook and everything else. So what I'm doing with private clients at the moment is setting up these custom GPTs based off that prompt stack. We use the prompt stack to get the outputs. We get the outputs into the GPT. Then we set up this little content machine in your voice, your style, all your knowledge that spits out the content um, ideas and even writes it for you. And then you can then distribute that off to your team. So team, top of the hour, I like to keep things, these things running pretty tight. Um, but you can see I'm a bit excited by this stuff. I think it's really cool. If you do too, um, jump on and grab that prompt stack for a hundred bucks. It'll be, I'll put the price back up probably over the weekend sometime. Uh, if you want a hand doing this with me, Obviously, existing coaching clients who are on the call, we're working through this stuff already, but I would recommend that you work on your content plan for the next 90 days, and we do a one-on-one -on -one to review that together. Um, Jody said, perfect. Yes, a VA can follow it. Yeah, that's exactly right. This means that you're doing your highest and best use stuff, and you're leveraging technology, and you're leveraging VAs, and it's, it's just a, it's a nice system. 
if you would like a hand, just um, respond to the email that I'm about to send you or put um, done with you in the D W Y done with you into the chat. And we can work through this, um, this stuff together. I'm going to send you the link to book into my calendar. Many of you might like that. We'll just have a quick chat, see if, see what you're trying to do, see if it's a good fit, see if um, I think you gel with the other people in the group. And basically, if today's workshop has been useful to you, as today has been a free workshop, this is, I have, it's, it's the stuff that I teach my private clients. They were on the call today, some of them. Um, if this is all, if it's been useful, I always appreciate a Google review. Thanks for tuning in in Ohio, Stacey. All right. Let's, um, let's call it quits there. I'm happy to stick around to answer some questions, but I just wanted to make sure that I finished pretty much when I said I was going to finish. See you, Lisa. We'll talk soon. See you, Paul. Good to see you, Kate. Hey, Chitty. Iris, I think we're talking later this afternoon. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, cool. Can I ask a question, please? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So who, who am I talking with? Sharon. Hey, Sharon. Good to <laughs> see you. Let me just um, remove my pen so I can see the faces properly. Hello there. Lovely to see you. I miss <laughs> your face. <laughs> it hasn't improved any. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you your daughter just gets more adorable every time I see her. Uh, <laughs> So sweet. Oh, uh, yeah. She does like coming in here to meet everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, my question, when you got to the stage of saying, now you do this and then you drop it all into, uh, I'm going to go back in my pages, but the one that um, records your, your planning. Trello? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Is there something available? that um, you could drop it into that not only sort of re records it, but is actually you're able to automate from there, like go in, full set up, next, press the button on this one to publish now, or put dates on them to auto publish. Oh, oh yeah, yes. I, I choose to manually um, publish, but there are publishing tools I don't know the best ones right now, but in the past, Buffer and Hootsuite, and even Canva has that ability now to publish to certain platforms. Sorry, what was the last one? Canva. If you're designing stuff in Canva, oh, you can. Right. Sorry, someone else had a suggestion? No, that was Siri talking to me. Oh, Siri, know. what did Siri have to say? Um, sorry, I couldn't go back. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm expecting Siri to start Siri, talking me through one of these devices now. I can't sleep, but I enjoy a good bedtime story. Uh, bedtime story, good one, Siri. Um, yeah, so some of those Hootsuite, Canva or Buffer. You, so you would still have to, I see there's two steps. Like if you're just going to record a video, yeah. what I do is I record the video and I Dropbox that to my VAs and then they need to edit it and then schedule it out to the different platforms. Right. So there's not, currently there's not a, a platform where you can just drop a raw video in and it will auto, auto schedule publish, um, but it's a two-step process and one that the VAs typically manage. The, the video editing can actually also be 
sometimes done with AI. Like there's a tool that I also use called Vidyo. Uh, that's it. That V-I-D-Y-O yeah. dot AI. Okay. And so what that does, if you want to upload, say, a recording of a, a conference, presentation, or a coaching call, or something like that, or a workshop, what it will do, it will, um, I'll just give an example, I, I hope. It will actually um, give, like it'll create for you lots of little short snippets. So here, here's me talking about LinkedIn versus Vimeo. It's a 55 second reel. I can play that and it's got the captions. And so it's just taken all of this uh, footage from one of my coaching calls. Yep. So that's another way that you can just drop a file in and expect it to be all edited with captions and everything else um, automatically. Yeah, it is pretty neat, Larry. Yeah. You still need to look at it. Like you can see there that some people were cut out. And for me, I would only want pretty much me talking on the camera and just answering somebody's question. Okay. Excellent. Thanks for that. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Any other questions, Carol, Iris, Thomas, Frank? Oh, good. Well, let's, um, if you've got questions or when they pop up, you let me know, re respond to one of my emails. I'm always here and um, we'll talk more soon.